All right, we're back, and we're talking about the second movie of this trilogy here, uh, the game trilogy, just game trilogy. So if that's just a something they've added, um, because the thing that really connects them is the word the and game. They're just like, yeah, game trilogy, I'll do. Um, yeah, this is the second movie, The Killing Game. Which I, I think is an improvement over the first film. I didn't find myself getting as lost with this film. Um, I still did, did get lost a few times. I even mixed up the two characters. As, so, we start up in a kind of a flashback because you kind of have like a very hazy vision. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it on here so I can keep track of what I'm doing. So, yeah. Then I have this easy where assassination where our main character, who I have forgotten his name, is... I was looking up Dragon Ball Z now. Sorry, I got distracted a bit. Uh, there we go, let's look it up. Uh, Narumi, there we go. I've forgotten his name. He spares, t he spares two people, uh, like a schoolgirl and this businesswoman. Um, yeah, he spares two of them. Uh, though I don't know if he intended to spare the second one. Because he kind of does a Russian roulette. don't know if he actually knew he was going to spare her. Yeah, after a hit, he basically goes into hiding for five years. Um, don't really know what happened in those five years. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe the first film happened during that time. I don't know. I love the time, time skip. Then we cut to like, yeah, present day where we have a very excitable guy that um, room is returned. I don't know if he was told or if he's been waiting there for the last five years because I don't know. He's he's very excitable about him returning. Um, and I was like, eh, this seems a little weird. He returns to his old place, which is apparently covered in dust. He hasn't been there for so long, and he's poor as fuck. He goes to hostess club and basically can't afford anything. Um, which I did watch it. It was like really expensive. They had stuff like it was like a couple of hundred yen. I'm like a hundred, well, a couple hundred, a couple two hundred pounds um, in yen. And I was like, whoa, that's that's expensive for a couple of drinks. I mean, I've I bought drinks in London before and it wasn't that expensive. You know. But he kind of has his usual nonchalant, nonchalant uh, attitude. And then um, with the over excitable guy, um, gets a job as a debt collector. Uh, collecting debts, obviously. Um, being very good at it. Uh, quite, I quite like the scene of just shouting into a megaphone that, you know, guy. You're trying to collect debts for is, is, is holding a debt. I'm like, oh, okay. I like quite like the scene. Um, and yeah, he's like, this guy has now paid. Everything is fine. Yeah, like shouting into it, letting everyone know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Uh, I kind of like these. Yeah, working for this madam essentially, um, collecting debts. And then he kind of goes back to his old assassination ways. Well. I just remember the, the the scene we had where he's like, there's a little little short guy who keeps stepping on his feet each time. Um, that's also a, a funny scene. This is a, this is a good like comedic moments to these films. I kind of would have liked more consistency with that. Um, like other than that, kind of gets into the more serious attitude. Okay, cool, fine, fine, I guess. Ah. Yeah, he kind of gets, he, he's basically paid to try and kill two rival um, groups. Give me the backstory on this film. Sorry, I'm looking at the seat. Um, in the killing game, Narumi finds himself caught in the midst of a violent Yakuza gang warfare while his own brutal cast past catches up to him um, in the form of two beautiful women still bearing the emotional scars of his past uh, assignments. That's it. 
Um, yeah, than the most of the film. I mean, he there are some. He does have some badass scenes where one guy comes up with a knife and he's just like, yeah, whatever. Like, and he, he just put like has his knife in front of the guy, just like, hey, do you want your knife back, buddy? Hey, buddy, do you want your knife back? <laughs> uh, just, uh, I love it. Like, I kind of like this character being more of a badass because in the first film, I'll be honest, he was a shithead. An utter shithead. I mean, he still is a bit of a shithead. But he's less of a shithead now, and he's a bit more badass. Because uh, he just got kicked, his ass kicked almost every single time he was in a fight. Uh, and you're just like, really? Really? Okay. Oh, uh, whatever. Um, yeah. Get an um, incredibly unnecessary... Um, R scene. Let's just call cool it R scene. And murder. It's just it just feels unnecessary in the story. Um, I think that's the girl, the school girl he saved. Is it the two? I think they are the two women he saved. Are two women who die in this film? I'll be honest. Sometimes I have a, I have hard time keeping track of characters. I'm not the best of it, and it doesn't. Obviously, yeah, a language, a slight language barrier doesn't help me. Um, I do. I also find it when any time I watch any film where it's, uh, everyone's all, all all looks very similar. Not yeah, like I will, I will say this if it's like an entire white cast, I get lost in. Uh, even then, I'm just like, Hur? like I like that's why I like a multiracial cast because I find it easy to keep track of characters. <laughs> that's why I like it. I know, it's a, it does sound bad, but I'm just like, I, it really does help. Me, personally. Yeah, it does look, let's be honest, the main character, it does look a lot more like a badass. And going through and just, like, fucking murdering a bunch of dudes. But, yeah, it feels very much like a, uh, kind of like a Yakuza game. Yeah, if, instead of, yeah, actual fighting of going around the room, he's just shooting up everyone. Um... Yeah, his his best friend gets captured. Oh, I guess he's a friend. We assume. It's it's never really quite established their, their relationship, but uh, yeah, more badassery. Killed up by a woman. They they have a chat. Have the, have the sex. Yes, of course they do. It's a seventies film. There must be some sex. How do you not have a 70s film without the sex? It's just law. You've gotta have the sex. Um. And then he goes off to kill, kill the other mob boss. And then kind of ends up killing the woman as well. Because reasons? I'm never quite sure about that bit. I was like, why is he killing her? He goes up to her, kills her and goes, well, drinks a bit of vodka and then just spits it out and then leaves. And just like, what? what? What are you doing, mate? Um, and then he leaves his medic relief friend and ends up going to a hostess club where he still can't pay, but he pretends like he can. And then he tries to escape his debt again. Uh, as this constant degenerate kind of character does this. Um, like I said, I think this one is better than the first film. I definitely enjoyed it a lot more than the, the first film. Um... I still find these movies are more more style than substance in some, some ways. They look great and they sound beautiful. The one thing I discovered when I was watching these films is this this guy. I don't know if it's this character, but the actor is like the inspiration for Spike Spiegel and a lot of other like characters as well, but particularly Spike Spiegel. And I kind of get that feeling that they definitely watched these movies because these are. Have very jazzy soundtracks, which, you know, as we know, Cowboy Bebop, very jazzy. Um, yeah, like I said, this one is a marketable improvement over the first film. I mean, there's still a bar scene, so I mean, at least it's not the main character and it's more of an other character who I think gets murdered. I'm not quite sure, but. 
it's at least not the main character doing it. There's, there's, there's some improvement there. But yeah, that is the killing game. And uh, yeah, next time we're going to be talking about the last film of the trilogy. Uh, the execution game. I need to check. Sometimes you check this. I'm like, what game is this? Uh, we got the dangerous game, the killing game, and the execution game. So yes, next time we'll talk about the execution game. So for now, I say live long and prosper. And we'll see you next time for more killing and games and execution. Bye for now.